Welcome, I'm David Geiger. An Iowa representative is trying to expand credit access to farmers. In a bipartisan bill introduced to the House of Representatives, Iowa Representative Randy Feenstra and his Democrat colleague Ron Kind are asking to remove taxation on income from farm real estate loans made by community banks. The Enhanced Credit Opportunities in Rural America Act intends to allow more institutions to offer affordable credit to rural and ag-based borrowers. In a statement, Feenstra says this gives more resources to help farmers succeed, and early estimates show the act could reduce average interest rates on farm loans by 1.5 to 2%. Iowa farmers produced fewer pounds of honey and milk this past year. According to the Iowa Honey and Milk Production Reports from the National Agricultural Statistics Service, Iowa honeybees produced 2.03 million pounds last year, about 60,000 fewer than the year before. Yield is up though, averaging about 3 pounds per colony more at 58. Honey colonies are also down by about 3,000, now at 35,000 statewide. These numbers are from farmers with 5 colonies or more. Milk production in Iowa is technically down 2% since last year at 422 million pounds. However, adjusting for the leap year, it was up 2%. Average number of milk cows were 5,000 more than last year, but monthly production was down slightly. A lot of exports of corn this past week is boosting the market. Our analyst Alan Brugler has the week recap. These are big purchases. The Chinese have quite a bit of corn they haven't shipped yet. But the, the market's concluding that with this level of business, USDA is going to have to raise their export forecast and tighten their ending stocks, and that's support in the market. We did have a bit of a washout on Thursday across all the ag commodities, uh, but uh, the market came back on Friday and, and offset much of that sell pressure. It's not clear yet what caused all that nervousness, but it was across a lot of different markets. Uh, soybean market was down hard on Thursday, as I mentioned, but it got a little help on Friday because uh, one of the labor unions in Rosario, Argentina, decided to go on strike. Well, cash market, not a whole lot happened this week. The uh, futures have a pretty good premium to the cash. They're trading 118, 119. But again, they got caught in that big Thursday sell-off across the commodity markets. Over on the hog side of things, uh, just keep marching higher, and the, it's it's still the same thing that we've had. We've had we have very tight cold storage stocks. We've got very strong, historically speaking, uh, pork exports, and we had cut back production a little bit because of the COVID issues in 2020. Japan is imposing an emergency tariff hike on U.S. beef. The volume of imports from 2020 is thought to have gone past the 242,000 metric ton mark, which is the number where a duty hike is triggered. Should the tariff go into effect, it jumps about 13% to 38.5% for one month. This is legal through the bilateral trade agreement that started in January. Japan's agriculture minister says the increase in prices for beef will not impact its consumers. The country's consumption of American beef rose sharply higher because of a drop in beef imports from the drought hit Australia. And that's all I have for the Agribusiness Report today. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next time. We have our stories online. Head over to who13.com, click news, and then agribusiness.